I want to begin by saying how um, genuinely delighted we were to be invited to speak here today, or for, for me to speak on behalf of our brand today. We've been in Asia for almost 20 years, and uh, it, we have been a company for almost 24, 25 years this year. And Asia has held, really, at the very core of our representation, many of the, the, the counters and the stores that have been reflected um, in, in, uh, in our interpretation uh, around the world. Australia, our founding country, is obviously very much part of Asia, and it seems appropriate to speak to you. I, I'm also very pleased to speak to you because you are part of an industry that is so integral to who we are. So I just, for those who don't know our company, I want to begin by saying that we were founded in, we founded the company in 1987, and we've been creating products for skin, hair and body uh, ever since that date. We sell our products in over 60 international signature stores around the world and in ESOP counters in the finest department stores in New York, Paris, Tokyo, and uh, beyond. Uh, the, when I reread this the, the title of my speech this morning, Brand Integrity, I actually felt that I was clearly in a very bad mood when I <laughs> wrote that, and obviously something had, uh, had uh, made me reflect on maybe uh, a, a, a much uh, greater past to, to our history and an aspect of Asia that is not really relevant to today. But relevant to the, uh, the idea of branding in Asia, I will, sort of, uh, I will of course remain to the theme and, and, and work around that. I felt that for those of you who don't know our brand, I should begin by showing you some images. Um, this image, I just want to make sure it's on. Uh, this image is of uh, uh, our flagship store in Australia, and I'm very sorry, it's a pathetic image actually. The, the, the curtain at the back is actually leather, and the floor is made from an incredible goat's hair. The, the, the actual furniture fixtures are are uh, made from copper, and it's a, it's a truly uh, beautiful store. I thought I'd show you these images to give you uh, a, a sense of the company that we are and the, the manner in which we communicate cosmetics. Um, our, um, our brand, uh, ESOP, is known for its passionate engagement with uh, the cultural landscape. And uh, this is a, an image that is perfect, projected of us and the way that we conduct ourselves around the world. We are particularly respectful of all of those who, uh, who sing or write or cook or pursue any line of uh, creativity, uh, creative expression. And we enthusiastically encourage those who attend to the design of all things, large and small. So in that, with that background in mind, you're looking at images of our stores. This one is, in, in, is in, in Paris, and it's actually our fifth store in Paris. And you can see that the, the products are held on the wall and are sitting on nails. And just going back for a moment, this store in Geneva, Switzerland, a store that we opened this year, it's our fourth store in Switzerland, is actually completely made from copper. Our store in the Marais uh, in Paris, and it's a very good example of uh, our stores and the, the manner in which they, the unique manner in which they represent the retail landscape. And we have very little in common with one another, uh, they have very little in common with one another aside from a welcoming ambience. And you can see that already. Every single door that is ESOP is completely different. The, the actual containers that you can see, the, the, the water ESOP uh, is sold in, through a whole variety of sensory experiences. The one that is very key to our definition is the fact that the product is demonstrated uh, on the hands. And the containers that you can see, in fact, the, the very small versions that hold the product to the wall are actually the tops to the underground plumbing uh, across France. We regard our stores as the sh showcases for our highly prized products. They are the showcase. They make for the most interesting use of each space, and we collaborate with talented designers and architects. In every instance, and this is very important, we aim to add rather than detract from the existing um, and build an environment taking into account the characteristics of the neighborhood and the type of outlets, uh, outlets which um, we share on that street. We think about everything around us before we begin the design. Within each store, we work with objects and materials that offer interesting possibilities because of their color and their texture and their history. 
and our concern with design, which is why I'm standing here, applies to our containers and our labels and, and our gift boxes and are all highly functional and carefully considered objects, modest in appearance, but at the end are the result in a great deal of thinking. And we believe unequivocally that good design can improve one's life, as I'm sure all of you who sit before you, uh, before me, uh, would agree. Some stores in London. And this ongoing theme of difference that, that permeates what we do. This is the last store that we've actually opened. We opened this store four weeks ago, and this is in Boston, in Newbury Street in Boston. Having looked at these doors, what you can see is that there are, there are certainly um, themes that hold each door and unite it like siblings, but that the idea of communicating for our brand, the manner in which we communicate, is devoid of, of traditional and, and, and cliche ideas, for want of a better term. You can't, what you can't see is that we don't have pricing anywhere. When you enter an ESOP store, we employ the most remarkable staff, I believe, around the world to communicate what you need to understand about the brand. And simultaneously, you can see that the way that the stores are laid out invites customers to browse and pause as if it were a library. And they are a haven. They are a very safe haven for people who have inquiry, who have need, who are seeking solutions, but who are not necessarily wanting to be brusquely and often very rudely corralled into, into purchasing in, in, in the demanding manners that are generally known as retail. This is our flagship store in New York, in Bleecker Street, which has also opened in the, the last eight weeks. Maybe as designers, you'd be interested to know that it was actually 18 months uh, overdue in opening, a very traumatic experience for everyone involved. So it seems important that I give you a, a sense, a quick timeline as to our, our presence in Asia, because that, that really is, um, I think, very, very important to who we are. We actually began in 1993, and at that time, Tang's uh, in Singapore for one year um, had a very small pop-up, uh, what we would call it pop-up today, a small emporium in a, a building alongside their flagship store. And it, it really was modelled with what retail was doing at that time. And there were groundbreaking individuals like Joyce Ma, who we, we, we later dealt with we, in the same year, dealt with in Hong Kong, who were um, considering retail in a way that was really not, it had never been represented in, in Asia before. We, we were in that door and for the year that it traded remained uh, um, loyal to, to Tang's and, the, 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 and gave them uh, all the support we could in the belief that it was the way retail should flow in, in Asia. Unfortunately, that door didn't remain. Uh, in 1995, sorry, two years later, we, we opened with the in Joyce. Um, Mrs. Ma came to us in Australia. At that time, we were an absolute fledgling company, but, but being the visionary she is, she could see the innovators we were and sat in the, the, the back of, uh, of our door and we um, discussed going into what was then uh, a plans in, in motion, the idea of a cosmetics area. And of course, for those of you who live in Hong Kong, this has become a, a, a very significant part of the cosmetic landscape and the retail landscape of this city. Uh, we opened in Malaysia and always with ESOP, we're driven by early adapters and, and innovators and a, 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 a graduate from Melbourne University who had found the product in a department store in Melbourne um, um, came to us and, and believed that there were people who would understand ESOP in Malaysia. And the same in Japan. We had opened in Barney's New York and we were approached by Barney's Japan and have remained there, there ever since. Um, in 2000, moving forward, we opened our first signature store in Taiwan and entered the Mitsukoshi, Mitsukoshi chain and in the same year opened in Korea. Today we have 15 signature stores and dozens of department stores across Asia. And as I said before, they are extremely relevant to the brand at an international uh, level. So I just wanted to show these. And the reason for continuing these images from the European perspective, uh, American European perspective to the Asian perspective, is to look at continuity. And in the context of our brand integrity, the first question that I, that I posed on the page, the, the fact that we, regardless of what has been suggested to us, and, and many people, many voices have suggested many things, have remained loyal to design, have remained loyal to the branding of our company, 
and the very preciousness uh, of that, the very uniqueness of that. And regardless of how few people could understand us in any city, have used our doors as the ongoing communication for who we are and, of course, to host our products. This store in Singapore actually has 70 kilometres of string. That's what lies be before it. And the, the uh, floor is queer matting. This is a store in, in, in the Ginza, and we may have received, I would suggest to you, maybe th three or four dozen comments from individual uh, retailers and, uh, around Japan informing us that this store will never work because the lighting is uh, too poor and the surface is too cold. And in fact, this store is building a, a wonderful uh, uh, following. The, the, the lane that it's in is called Brick Lane. It's a, a, a store in a street in the Ginza, a well-known street in the Ginza. And so the entire interior pays homage to that and is made from bricks. You can see the, the perpetual use of water and the idea of the um, product being introduced through hand demonstration. Once again, in terms of brand integrity and the definition of ourselves, around the world, not just in Asia, but especially in Asia, we were told from the beginning we could not possibly approach people and uh, demonstrate product on their hands, that that wasn't the way Asians could be communicated with, and that it would be uh, we were destined to failure. And to all of you who are at this moment being put, having rejection put forward into in terms of your brands, I say to you, stay aligned with who you are. For us, this has been the most, really, the most important part, apart from design, of how we've succeeded and grown our brand in Asia. Uh, in Ayamaya, in, in, in Japan, this is our flagship store. This poor store really suffered in the earthquake. Um, and it had only been opened for, for eight weeks, or maybe eight months, not eight weeks. Um, prior to the, that, that devastation. This store is made from surfaces of resin and it is completely made from a, a very small um, house, very small house, that was deconstructed and reconstructed. We, we um, issues pertaining to sustainability, to uh, treating, uh, not testing on animals, to uh, not using unnecessary out of packaging, the choice of ingredients, all of this is the foundation of who we are as a company. We do not give voice to these points in how we communicate the brand. We don't discuss them. Uh, we just live them, and we have lived them for the entirety of, a, of, of our lives. And we have watched and evolved as an appalling example of green, green washing have occurred in every country around the world. And as such, we remain even more silent about what we do. But, but for the purposes of this um, communication, I wanted you to know that it was um, a deconstructed and reconstructed uh, building. Uh, in Yokohama, and the image at the very back of the the two women uh, who, are, who are actually dancers and whose hair is entwined is a launch that we've recently done for the relaunching of our hair care. In Maranucci, in Japan, and in every case, what you're looking at are, are the most unconventional of environments in which people expect to find cosmetics. You can see that we light with respect that is the, anti it is the opposite of department stores around the world, that rather than making women and men feel um, demoralized often by the degree of lighting, that we, we have the most subdued lighting, that we are not kind for the sake of it, we're kind both in, in, in for a sense of respect and also because we have staff who we need to honor and, and for whom the environment must not just be um, beautiful but also comfortable. This is in... Uh, Malaysia. This is a, also a newly opened store, and this pays this pays respect to the the, the origins of of uh, the of Malaysia, to the to the native people of Malaysia, the indigenous people of Malaysia, and the the houses that they created. Uh, and of course, for those of you who are residents of of uh, Hong Kong, this is a newly opened store in High Sun Place. One in City Plaza. In fact, I just want to go back, sorry, the one in City Plaza, the, the, the frame of this doesn't allow you to see that I'm standing in front of a wall, and that wall was actually playing uh, films, Italian films from the 1940s all day. And that, that, that has formed an in, intriguing introduction for, for many people. And our flagship store here, Shenwan. 
So our concern about design, uh, as I said, can, can contain, uh, pertains to everything uh, that we do, and it is in, incorporated into our marketing. And I want to move now on to the, this, this subject of marketing um, pertinent to brand integrity. Um, when we arrived, and it really this applies to anywhere in the world, uh, as a brand who doesn't advertise, we have never we have never advertised, and so marketing is is absolutely the lifeblood of how we communicate outside of our stores. Um, we have been introduced and brought to the world of retail, and at that point, at that introduction, everybody has always wanted us for our difference, and we've been uh, contacted by by department store buyers around the world in the namesake of our difference. And then, uh, post the, the, the fervor of the, the, the first flush of the first relationship and us landing on the door, we are then demanded uh, to become, have been demanded to become the same. That our sense of difference and has then offered challenges that have been uh, and, and been provocative uh, to us in a, in, a, in a defensive manner and for those who have um, held our brand ha have caused, I'm sure, a great deal of heartache. So I thought that in the context of brand integrity, this was a very important part of what I wanted to, to say and express to you as people rated design. I'm going to show you a couple of in images that have caused profound controversy um, and this one in particular uh, <laughs> ended up um, finding uh, a moment where we actually had to host department store um, buyers um, from uh, um, one country. We had to invite them all uh, to a one-day seminar uh, and, and uh, just give some explanation um, because of their horror of the campaign that we had presented uh, in the namesake of Valentine's Day. Um, over history, we, uh, 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 in, at the very beginning, we completely ignored all days, I want to tell you. We completely ignored every single day. And the introduction of a reference to Valentine's Day uh, was in the first year made with um, loaves of bread. And in our store, we had loaves of bread crafted, had hand bread, bread handcrafted into heart shapes. And we gave a large loaf of heart bread to everyone in, in the relevant doors. And in the second year, we introduced this campaign. And I must apologize that this actually doesn't fully uh, um, pay homage to the degree to which we put detail into this design. As designers, I want you to know this far more um, actually built into it. There, there, we, we used the, the French version of Grey's Anatomy, and we had that entire heart surrounded by the French definition of all of the, 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 the aspects that are revealed in that cross section of the, the human heart. And we laid this image on um, our, card, our, 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 our standard cardboard boxes and we had the most exquisite quote from Shakespeare about love. And every item that was purchased in the namesake of Valentine's Day leading up to and in, in the weeks thereafter was placed inside this box. And it caused the most, m most pain and hardship of anything that we actually did and I think that if there was ever a moment that in terms of the question around branding that we were shaky in Asia, it was in, in that moment. And we, we, we recovered our senses because we were in this meeting that I, I am citing to you. And I need to tell you that in other countries in Asia, they actually just simply refused to use it. Um, we recovered from that meeting with, with a still fast belief that we would never again allow ourselves to be exposed to such a torturous and uh, unjustified examination of our approach to marketing, of our branding. And they, we will forever remain loyal to what we believed was right for those people for whom our brand ESOP is the right brand. And so um, out of what was really a very tumultuous period, we, we ended up um, making very firm decisions around the need as, our, as a company to continue on the path of remaining true and honoring the, the beliefs that we have around the, the people who follow our, our brand, ESOP. This campaign, the deodorant campaign of 2010, uh, almost, had us, <laughs> almost had us expelled from uh, department stores uh, around, around Asia. 
Uh, I'd like you to know that this is a, 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 an image that we acquired, I don't know if there's anyone here from P&G, but from Procter & Gamble. It was a testing that they did in 1973. It's very interesting in terms of pharmacology and, and the science that relates to cosmetics, how far that has gone. Um, this, was the, this is a legitimate image from a P&G lab of the determination of the success of a deodorant. And we had this on, on, on this scale um, inside and, and across our, our, you know, on our windows around the world as the launch of our deodorant. And I, I will tell you with great pride that we uh, sold out this product around the world as a result of, of both this as the introduction and of the product itself, which is, uh, which is an exceptional um, product. <laughs> and it once again, though, um, uh, almost brought uh, uh, bitter blows um, to companies uh, other than ourselves representing the brand. And in fact, in some places, people, companies refused, refused to use this image. And um, it, uh, it, 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 it once again gave us some, the, uh, uh, reminded us of our sense of how important it is when you know who you are as a company and when you believe in who you are as a company to keep your branding and all that it, re it represents it true at every single moment, regardless of what pressures are placed around you. This image, I, I, th this image w which um, we used last year, was, was rejected uh, on the grounds that it looked too native. <laughs> that was a comment that we received, it looked too native, which is both uh, patronizing and, uh, and really quite ignorant. Um, this was a, for a, a body scrub. Um, the, 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 for, for, for the, our customers, I have to say, um, it was a, a product that they saw with great tenderness and it, almost to a person, people commented on their, their love for elephants. It wasn't meant to be a, a comment about, about that, but that was how it was received all over the world, in, including uh, Asia. Our, our design is uh, clearly um, out of the box. Um, we, we make um, exceptional products and we are very pragmatic and we are very professional. And we've always regarded creativity, and that's what our marketing is, clearly, uh, as a crucial part of making and the selling of our products. So this is not something that other people have the right to have an opinion on. And I direct this back to you again in terms of the brands that you are building. Um, remain loyal. Um, we, our brand, Aesop, is recognised as an innovative company and it's, in, it's seen in that context for our remarkable spaces and, and the risks that we encourage our collaborating designers and architects um, to express um, for themselves. And we support um, this area and we offer the creative community and all the neighbours around us um, this idea and we are firm in our belief that our customers should not be spoken down to or misled by anyone um, and that what we should do is, is keep to the, this path that we are on. So that in that context, we do not follow and we do not lead um, in, in, in any, um, it, to any other company in our industry. We don't look to any other and have never looked at any other company, uh, cosmetic company, in the formulation of our brand at any level. Um, we still fastly believe that what we are doing is uh, for an audience of people like ourselves for whom um, the, the cosmetic world is, is, is a treacherous path in its traditional form and that, um, that there needs to be honesty and, uh, uh, in how our products are communicated. We embrace um, all the creative possibilities uh, around that, and the, whether it's th through formulation or whether it's through design, and the challenges that arise in, in our times around um, change and evolution. And because that's what it is, it's presenting us with incredible challenges that we have to push back. Changing the way people um, understand cosmetics and leading uh, um, the, the, this evolution as part of a, a handful of companies, we're certainly not doing that alone, uh, is, has, has, has represented a great deal of risk. 
and um, we've been told many times that what we're doing is risking the brand. But rather than that, we feel that to have taken any other path would have risked and, in fact, have annihilated the brand. So we respect and we support the, um, the sensitive souls that, that sit before me uh, today, um, you, um, and, and this, the, the way that you excel in your individual creative fields. And we know that you contribute enormously to ESOP and to the emotional and the commercial well-being of our brand. Uh, the, 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 uh, I'm sorry, this is sort of, I'm, I'm sort of trying to finish and, and, and simultaneously show you just this final moment because for me this really sums up this idea of remaining uh, integrity around your brand, uh, your branding and the companies you represent or the products that you re represent are not conforming. On the right-hand side is a screwed up version of a product that is ubiquitous to our brand, and that is the, um, the hand balm, the resurrection hand balm. And around the world, people are carrying and using this brand, uh, this product every day as they are uh, our skincare. Next to that lies the, the, the glass bottle of Aesop, the one, the image that is also ubiquitous to our company. This screwed up image we have of the tube, we have used since this moment in Paris when uh, Dennis and I and Michael O'Keefe, the CEO uh, of Aesop, found our first the place that we decided would be our first store. There was a for, for lease sign. We, we, had, we had poured over the streets of Paris and, and it had argued as to where it should all begin and had found uh, in Rue Bonaparte on left bank this, this exquisite store. And uh, I had, of course, I was carrying a, a, jar, a, a container of our, a tube of our hand balm and Dennis uh, asked for it. He screwed it up. He laid over the lock on the door. He shot the image. And that was the, in, the, 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 the embarking of um, our moment in Paris and the power that that has had for Asia, I should also cite, um, in people understanding our company. And we thereafter have used it as the definition of our product as part of our, the branding of our product. And it has been refused to be published in, in any number of um, department store programs and, 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 and um, selling tools since that moment. And it really does sum up the battle that, that, that we, have, we have had to experience. I don't want to end, however, on a, on, a, on a negative note because there's anything but negativity in branding in Asia. I, I really and, and, and really with the deepest honesty say to you that, that customers in Asia are some of the most fabulous customers in the world. They, are, they have no bounds to what they will experiment with. They have taken and embraced our brand for its difference, not for its sameness, and have given us the most remarkable opportunities and experiences. And I really must give credit to Asia for the, the, the contribution it's made to the brand that, that is ESOP. And I thank you all very much for your time today.